In a lengthy judgment by presiding Judge Justice David Wangusi, he disagreed the assessor's opinion who had earlier asked court to acquit Kazinda on grounds that prosecution had failed to link Kazinda to the charges. The judge held that the prosecution had proved beyond reasonable doubt that Kazinda had forged signatures of the permanent secretary, Pasbi Jirimanaf, found on the security papers and authorization forms that were found in possession of Kazinda's nephew, Peter Lubulwa, and also at his mother's residence in Bokoto. High in this judgment is that he was found guilty of forging over 20 signatures of his then boss and now permanent secretary in the Minister of Gender, Paspi Jirimana, with the intention to defraud the Prime Minister's office. The documents that he forged included security papers and withdrawal forms. The documents that he forged included security papers and withdrawal forms, both very high sensitive documents that are used in transaction of huge sums of money recovered by police from the home of Kazenda's mother in Bokoto, Kampala, after a thorough search. No money was lost in this case, though prosecution says that he had intentions of defrauding the officer of the Prime Minister if the situation had not been arrested earlier. His mother's house was in the same compound with his house. Justice Wangusi will sentence Kazenda on Wednesday next week, but he faces a possible seven years for abuse of office, seven years for making a document without authority, three years for both forgery and for unlawful possession of government store. Justice Wangusi will sentence Kazenda on Wednesday next week, but he faces a possible seven years for abuse of office, seven years for making a document without authority, three years for both forgery and for unlawful possession of government documents. On the offense of forging Bijirimana's signatures, the judge noted that basing on the expert evidence, the signatures were not of Bijirimana, raising queries on who forged them. The judge adds that the circumstances under which these documents were found being hidden in a student's room in his mother's house, and yet they were very sensitive documents, it is traceable to him, Kazinda, with a motive to cover an illegal act, points at him as the one who forged the documents. During mitigation, the principal state attorney, Jen Francis Abodo, asked court to hand Kazinda the maximum custodial sentence to act as an example to the rising corruption in the country. Seeking for a custodial sentence and hoping to obtain one from the court is precisely what you said, to send the message that crime does not pay and to send the message to those entrusted with public offices to behave um, in a professional manner. In a report to the defense lawyers led by Augustine Odiot, asked court to give their client a lenient sentence, preferably a fine instead of a custodial one. Idiot explained to court that Kazinda is a breadwinner, a married man with children and dependents to look after. Kazinda has two other files still in court alongside three Ministry of Finance officials, Bright Atwine, David Mugisha and Wilbert Okello. They stand accused of diverting public resources to their personal gain. The money amounting to 20 billion Ugandan shillings was met for the Peace Recovery and Development Plan, PRDP funds. The case is at the lower court before Chief Magistrate Irene Akankwasa.